<laughs> this video starts with like Monty's headphones, like <laughs> like you just hear the rustling. That's what it starts with. Like we're like we're in an empty cinema, you know. Not trying to make too much noise. It's fine, you know. Just comes on, kicks the shit out of his headphones here on this. Pro. This is you know we're professional around here, Monty. You know that, right? Yeah. I don't know what you only, outlaws do Twitch. over there. Over on over on Wrestle. I've never been on Wrestle Purist, as you know, Bob. I don't know what they do over there, but True. Like, he comes on here, rustles around, you know, it's terrible. Anyway, another Fed Dead Redemption is here, folks. This new Fed Free that we've been working with is Bobby. How would you how did you explain this earlier, Bob? Oracle is now British, is what you're going yeah, with? Exactly. Monty, how do you feel about being Oracle? Is that like you tell that as a sort of compliment? How do you treat that? How do you react to that? You can't you can't replace the Oracle with wrestling. He's yeah, um... I agree. Fair. I'm just the guy filling the gap he's left mm. because of his other schedule. You know, he gets booked all over the place. He's a That's he's a hot act, you know. So I'm just there, man. Say, I'm here. Yeah. I'm like, I love Oracle. I was surprised they wanted him to do, you know, color commentary for PWG. I thought that was a little bit <laughs> out of his kind of comfort zone, but I'm proud of the guy. And you know, I think he can get into these bandido matches if he tries hard enough. So we'll see how it, you know, see how it goes, we'll let it play out. Right? That's always the best way to approach these things. Bobby Two Shoes, how are you doing this evening, pal? I'm doing well. You know, uh, we got some nice weather here today. Uh, it's not, you know, super hot anymore. Love to see that. And, uh, what's up, man? Hold up. Well, this is a Fed show. What is this business? Impact oh, yeah. Wrestling has been stuffed in a locker. Bob, you're the Twitter reporter. What happened? Yeah, they were uh, going back and forth, and it basically ended with Jade being like, you know, no one has to subscribe to a youtube channel or however impact uh airs their shows these days to see her which fair all right good <laughs> he was very hesitant to go all the way with embracing and so co-signing that which, which i respect you're a pro bob i like <clears throat> all right monty how are you this evening pal i'm good man i'm good you know professional wrestling's back I've heard finally that. you know we had a rough few months but it's back yeah. and uh yeah, man, ready to talk Fed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is some drama today that I would like to lead with. Um, much discussion of the dreaded contract tampering. Um, this brought out some incredible messages <laughs> from one Jack Crosby who <laughs> claimed he would be blocking anyone who was upset about this matter. I believe he tweeted such. So, um, Your immediate response to the illegal happenings in professional wrestling today, Bob? Um, you know, Sean put the tweet out and I'm like, oh, that sounds like tampering, but also there's not like anyone you, uh, can report it to. So what, okay. I mean, that happens. And then, uh, you know, it came out and that was still my take and, uh, kind of thought we could all just agree it's tampering, but there's nothing anyone can really do about it. And it's just something that happens and hopefully we can move on from it. But, uh, <laughs> wait, wait, did you just say your reaction to the news was that it sounds like tampering? Yeah. You know, I wanted to wait and see, just to be sure. And then, uh, you know, saw the story, and it was actually tampering. So, to be clear, I understand what you mean. Now, you mean the, it was when Sean had posted, like, the story's coming is what you mean, right? Yeah. That's what you're doing. Because for a minute, I thought you were so hesitant to give a firm take on any matter oh. at this point. That you were like, well, they've contacted someone under contract, but <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like it. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Um, Monty... You don't give a shit about this stuff, right? It's what it is. You get what you get, I suppose. Yeah. I was Triple H not in jail, you know. I know, man. Uh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen that. I've seen a few people calling for that one on the on the yeah. timeline. Wait for uh, real? Yeah, there are people that were like, "Oh, bro, you know, Tony Khan should people... sue him," and I'm like, "Well, he's probably not going to do that." <laughs> I've seen that take, bro. I've seen people that like Triple H, he's going to go jail or should be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get arrested. I'll, I'll be honest, with you man. I ain't no scoopster. I would guess that AEW would not like to get into a conversation of contract temper. I think both sides are happy to just let that shit be. Yeah. And, you know, I would not like someone to investigate some of the folks that have let their Fed contracts run down and the yeah. contact there. I, don't, I think that'd be good for anyone. So Yeah, you see, it happens, you know, yeah, back and like, forth. But of course it happens, you know. Yeah. Obviously it happens. It's funny that we, in wrestling, we uh, put this big thing 
around it, yeah. you know, or oh, stammering. <laughs> like, I honestly people, don't. Think people talk, man. Like, it's just what happens in the world. I don't even think we do it in like, I just think it's this, everyone is so fucking on edge right now, man. It's like, it's this bizarrely heated scenario we're in right now. So that's what I think it really is. This has popped me huge. Frank says he spent three months being behind and has finally caught up and can watch live. <laughs> I love the notion that it's like so chronological that you could not watch live until you're caught up. It's like fucking Breaking Bad. I very much respect that. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, Jade is on the side of Late Night Green in the Thursday Night Wars. Good call. How do we feel about this, boys? Joey Ding Dong, Bobby Double Time, and Monty Monarchy. What do, how do we feel about those names? It's not bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I feel like ours are the worst names. Yeah. Monty Monarchy is tough, I feel. Yeah, for, for a range of reasons. <laughs> Royce Man. You know, All right. Royce Man Greens. There you go. All right, anyway. You know how this show works, folks. We look at the week that was. We look ahead to the week that will be. Um, sorry, I've just seen a comment about it. Anyway, NXT, NXT 2.0 is where we'll start because we do this show on Tuesday. We'll look at last week and then at the end of the show, we'll look ahead to the show on tonight, so on and so forth. Um, is Nikita Lyons still making your skin crawl, Montel? What? <laughs> What's changed? <laughs> no, I don't know, man. <laughs> she may have turned the corner. She wrestled Keanu James. Good match. How's the chain wrestling? Right. What Bob, do you mean you do this, bro? Right. I, have you, I want you to turn the corner on this, Bob. Where do you stand on Nikita Lyons? <laughs> She's not very good. Right. If you would say so, it's fine. Um, how was this Wesley Trick Williams business? This has only got a five on Cage Match, which feels oh like a my great big God. Yeah? <laughs> Good time? Oh, I don't know where we're going now. This could go either way. Was that an oh my God of all you that fucking ruled? Or was that oh my oh God, God. It's got five? Oh, because um, I think it's because with the G1 and everything else that's going on, sometimes, like earlier when I was doing the match ratings for the site, I looked at what was on up Raw and like Seth Rollins versus Angelo Dawkins feels like fucking five years ago. But, you know, I forget a lot of things throughout the week and I completely forgot about that match and <laughs> he just brought it off. Was it it's good? Like, <laughs> well, it's what it was. It was um, it was like two. It was like two boxing rounds or some shit. <laughs> and they had like a match at the end. It was fucking. Oh my God. It was bad, but like yeah. it, was, it was just a pop. I can't believe I forgot about that. Wow, <laughs> Bob, do you agree this was bad? I hear there was. This sounds like an incredible. Play. How has this got a five point two? They did boxing and got a decent rating, Bob. It was fine. It was different from. Uh, it was better than the uh, Mark Miro Arn Anderson boxing match. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> pieces of shit putting a, a boy on through that. That's terrible. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Um, Apollo Crews, Roderick Strong, I heard good things about I did not watch. Um, Dave gave it three and three quarters, which fucking rules for a range of reasons. Um, fellow Rod Strong appreciator, Dave Meltzer. Bob, did you have a good time with this one? Two pros having a match in a small building in Florida? Yeah, it was good. I like both guys. I think they could probably both be on SmackDown, but, you know, maybe someday. I actually think – I think Roddy's going to come up soon. I hope so. He Someone is. asked – yeah. You didn't say, oh, my – oh, <laughs> You wrestle purists, fellas. Did you see when Manny was on the other day and I asked him, I go, and I'd set him up, right? Manny, when you hear this, I want you to know how this, this was what, how I worked this. So I'm not in the wrestle purist group chat, as you guys know. I, I left when I retired from the industry. Sad and I thought, I thought, Bray Wyatt's probably going to WWE, right? So I go to Manny, I go, what do you reckon, Manny? Bray coming into AEW? Immediately, in a second, Manny's face confirmed to me that the WWE thing was happening. <laughs> and I popped huge, pumped my, <laughs> pumped my fist to what I'd achieved. Your response was very telling there, young Monty. You seem confident on the Messiah of the Backbreaker working on Fox TV. Triple H, bro. Well, yeah. Even without whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, Triple, H, Triple H really respects and rates Roderick Strong as a worker, if nothing else. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you'll definitely see some sort of usage from him on the main roster, I think. Yeah. So it's just kind of a matter of when, not if, I'd imagine. Mm -hmm. Especially, yes. I've always, um, you know, expecting to be released. Yeah, one or the other, I agree. Um, 
What did you think the match with Cruz, Monty? Really good, really good. Um, yeah. It's NXT 2.0 has become one of those shows. It's like you hope there's a match like this on, and every yeah. now and every like couple of weeks there is, and uh, it just kind of makes the shows a lot more mm-hmm. <laughs> easier to get through. Obviously, Roderick Strong, Apollo Cruz, you know, Apollo just doing athletic great shit, and Roderick yeah. Strong's just a tremendous pro to me. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good match. Um. This main event's intriguing to me on paper. Zoe Stark and Cora Jade are both involved in big matches here in about an hour and change. Um, you know, two very different projects at very different levels of their career. You know, parts of their career anyway. Um, they got 11 minutes. The ratings are kind of mixed. Where were you at on this one, Bob? The the wrestling main event. I don't know if they a segment to close, but this was the wrestling main event. What did you think of it? It was okay. Like, I don't like Zoe Stark that much, and I don't think Cora is you know, quite there yet. But, like, for, for oh. what they are, it was fine. All right, so not, not good. No, like I'm kind of interested in their matches tonight. Um, you know, I think yeah. Corn Roxanne is going to be pretty good, and I don't have super high hopes for Mandy and Zoe, but uh, mm. yeah. Monty, where are you at on this? The two very different prospects in the NXT land. Where do you what do you reckon of this match, and then the two talents separately? Well, the match is kind of bad, you mm. know, but it, you know. <laughs> You get what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Cora Jade, I think she's really interesting because she's how old? Like 21, 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she seems all in on this wrestling thing. Uh, she's, a, she's a confident speaker that's only going to get better. In the ring, I imagine her uh, dedication to the game is going to take her so far, you know. And um, I think I think she'll turn out. I think she'll turn out okay. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I know she kind of gets a lot of shit on good old Twitter dot com, but that's because you know. So does Bob. The- so Bob. To be fair, <laughs> that's you know a lot of Fed. A lot of Fed fans did kind of hyper up, hyper up like she's. Yeah. I don't know. Like she's Roxanne, mm-hmm. <laughs> for example. Um, so it's kind of you know pushback, then it's kind of a big overcorrection. But if yeah. you look at her, like if you look at it, you know. Objectively, it's she's a somewhat promising talent, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Zoe, Zoe Stark. Stark. Yeah, I mean, she hit she hit a finish on Mandy Rose at the end of the show, and it looked pretty good. So there's that. Okay, good. You know, she's got she's got a six pack. You know, All right. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, here is NXT level up, Monty. I will say the names. You can respond accordingly. Firstly, it says that commentary on this show was done by Nigel McGuinness and Sudu Shah. Anything? Pop for Nigel. Eichmann Giro over Miles Bourne. Don't know who Miles Bourne is. Eichmann Giro. I'm sure you've accidentally seen him before. Oh, it's the jacket guy. Oh, fuck. Sorry. I apologize. I, try, I genuinely read, I read his name and was like, who the fuck is that fella? I'm sorry, I've seen him wrestle. He's like a he's a real wrestler. He's been wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Miles Bourne is a fella from North Carolina who made his debut in June of this year. So brand brand new. So there you go, Monty has one to add to your list of people to scout. Uh I'll Bob, are you out. clued in? On this fella from North Kakalaki, as the kids say? No, I've never heard of him. Uh, he is pretty new, like you said. Uh, gonna have to watch some tape, man. You better. Electra Lopez defeats Sol Ruka. Sol Ruka. Monty, anything? No. Electra Lopez? These, are, these are the real new ones. Um, Electra Lopez is still bad in the ring, but um, it's, oh, you know. <laughs> Could have pulled that punch a little bit there, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Developing. What do you want to say? You know, she's she's fine and all. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Um, when did find out when Electra Lopez debuted? All right, fine. So I know, kind of. Oh my god, she's got a two point nine three. Oh dear, she's a four year pro. Never mind. All right, let's move on. Um, uh, Chase U over Bronco Nima and Lucian Price. That's a good Damn, name. These, these guys you are brand new, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. an NXT level up, bro. This is where you just kind of... 
Right. Fresh out, fresh out the PC. Fresh. <laughs> okay. okay, someone has given this show a seven. Buff Kitty ninety three says, and I quote: "If you look at it in perspective of it being NXT level up, it was a good show. It did what it needed to do. Honestly, it was just good to see Electra Lopez actually wrestle and get a win over somebody who still has plenty of time to get traction in Sol Ruka." There you go. Glad he enjoyed it. All right. We have some business to take care of. A couple of subscriptions. Uh, good brother Bill, who I hope is doing well. He has subscribed for three months. He's resubscribed Prime. He says, All how. Dukes also says, All how. He's resubscribed Prime. Thank you very much. Um, Bitter Campari. Who is this? Who is this ally of yours, Bobby? Is it a pal of yours? Huh? Yeah, he, he can say if he wants. I'm not going to dox him. Bruce Pritchard? He's a pal of yours, too. That's what I mean. I wasn't saying it like he was fucking like your next little neighbor. I was saying like, who is this on Twitter.com? Oh, anyway, so, he he's cheered bits. He's giving us the monies, Bobby. It's hobo takes. Oh my God. Get him out of here. No, I'm just watching. <laughs> oh, well. um, the WrestleMania 39 launch party. Raquel Rodriguez over Nikki ASH. Bob, give me a star rating estimate. Uh, three and a half. Monty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one and one point five. Fury over Ricochet. Bob, star rating estimate. Uh, two. <laughs> Monty. Two and a quarter. The Street Profits over um, Gaza and Humberto. <laughs> Monty, I'll go you first. That should be good, right? Three. Bob? Three. The Phenomenal Demon, give it an 8 out of 10. He said, a good, somewhat expect <laughs> unexpected event at the SoFi Stadium with entertaining matches, some segments, and other things related to WrestleMania. Always ideal for the WrestleMania ticket party. Um, first event of these that is broadcast by WWE and social media. Piece yeah. of history, folks. It worked. Right. Yeah, they moved a whole bunch of tickets. For WrestleMania? Mm -hmm. Well, I never. You know, mm -hmm. right, one day we're going to stop doubting them on that stuff because, like, the one that we really got owned on was Clash of the Castle. Yeah. Remember the first day of Clash of the Castle where the tickets were too expensive and we all dunked on it and was like, hey, fucking idiots. No mm -hmm. one cares about wrestling here. And I went on WrestleTix till down and they had sold 61,000 tickets. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, decent house. Yeah, but this is the thing. I will still always be against it. They they well, could have they could have packed out the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, bro. That's fine, but what, but what I'm saying is like, let's be honest. You and I both we think we're smarter than we are, and we both thought they fucked it. Tickets too expensive. <laughs> they fucked. It. We did. We were talking about it. They fucked it. You know what I mean? They, they sold sixty thousand tickets, and they're doing like, what matches have they even got on there right now? Like Roman's wrestling in the trios. But other than that, that's it, right? Yep. I don't know. I just. I don't really know how it happens, but they always have to I mean, SummerSlam, they had half the building, but still, how many people were at SummerSlam? 40,000? Yeah, about that, yeah. It's a good house, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's not like it's, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not it's like they're going to be sitting there at night going, can we pay fucking Asuka tonight? You know what I mean? It's not like one of those deals. It is what it is. Anyway, SmackDown. This one will be interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. This star at the top here, the main event. <clears throat> Gunther and Shinsuke closed the show, which is a big deal for the IC title. A big deal for Gunter's kind of increasingly optimistic trajectory in WWE. But more than that, Monty, you and I are a little bit dismissive of of Shinsuke last week. So, Bob, I'll go to you first, give you a chance to take a victory lap. You still believe in the man, the king of strong style, so on and so forth. I'm told he looked great here against Gunter. What did you think, Bob? Yeah, no, he looked he looked very good. Um, I think they got about 15 minutes, which that's all you really need. Um, Shinsuke can go out and do that, you know, once or twice a month still. He could still factor in, man. Like, he could still be a guy that I think gets elevated and uh, goes out there, has some really good matches. I liked it a whole bunch. Monty is someone that I'm sure um, was a fan of Shinsuke Nakamura. Was this really fun to see him kind of roll back the years and have some fun and actually have a good match out there? Because it's been a while, right? Yeah, the, ma the match was... Okay. Oh. Um, oh, hang on a second. Shinsuke, Shinsuke is, he's just, he goes through the motions where he's like, he does, 
his version of the WWE mold, eight, if that makes sense. He got an 8.28, wasn't he? He got an 8.28. Yeah, got, I'm, get, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But in this match, it was kind of... He, sti- he stuck to what he's still good at now. So he was very, like, strike and submission-based in this. Yeah. Um, Gunther was great in this. It was, a, it, was, it was pretty decent. It wasn't... Um, I did think the timeline went a bit crazy with um, how great the fall it was. Uh, I thought the the last couple of minutes, especially the spot when Shinsuke was setting up for the Kinshasa and uh, Gunther just nailed him with a lariat, um, the cool. crowd like came up like crazy for Shinsuke in that. Um, that was a great spot, and the closing the closing few minutes of it was really good. But um, overall, as the as a whole match, it was you know it was pretty decent. I don't, it was nothing I was uh, overly fired up about. Well, Bob texts me when, once it finished. He texts me. If this happened at the Tokyo Dome, that old fucker melts would have given it seven and a half. Bob, <laughs> why did you text me that? Well, it's true. I don't know though. He might anyway. Now he's a big WWE guy again. Now, again, that does rule. I do like that. That like the one he tweeted tonight where he was like, "They beat Bear Call Soul, another great number." <laughs> like he was. <laughs> By the way, Bob did not text that. He doesn't. He would never say that fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> like an old bloke melts or whatever I said. But um I mean it's interesting. I'm actually gonna watch this now just so I can have a like pick a side of the argument, you know. So I, I like I think it was it was a nice match. I'm not star it, it was good. Um he's gonna pull up his spreadsheet. Look at this shit. Just read out everyone on Rest Superior's star rating for this match. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it three and a quarter. Right, what did what did Hangman give it? 3.75. Right. We'll leave it at that because I don't want to, you know, don't expose the brands. Of, I'm, I'm sure Hangman already tweeted his rap. So I think he did. All right, that works. Um, Drew Mack and Madcap Moss defeated the Usos in a non-title match. Um, really feels like we're kind of, we're spinning our wheels with this Usos business, Bobby. What do you reckon? Yeah, I don't really uh, know who's going to take the titles off them at this point. So it's yeah. just like... Well, the Owen Sammy thing's off the board, right? Because Kevin's doing, you know, he's yeah. going to be a top heel, it looks like. So. And I know we talked about uh, Gargano and Ciampa last week, but that would yeah. feel at least, what, a month or two away? I mean, yeah. at the very least. So are they just not going to work Clash of the Castle, or are they going to warm up a team in the next three weeks or whatever? I don't know, Monty. What do you reckon? What's happening? What, what are we doing with the Usos as tag team champions? I'm not sure. I did kind of get distracted by uh, Andrew the Giant's comment. Gunther selling was great. Uh, it definitely is worth mentioning. There was something to be said for it. Gunther was, Gunther was great in the match. He really Where did was. they find that kid, anyway? You know, that Gunther fellow, where did they get him? He looks like a big athlete. He looks like he played some basketball at some point. Bob, do you know where they got this kid? Was he one of those NIL fellas? Yeah, I think so. It's good stuff. Good scouting. Carry on, Monty. What do you think of this Usos business? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, it's isn't it? totally, it's, yeah, it's, they're just kind of they're they're so involved heavily in the Roman Drew stuff right now. It's like there's they're not actually doing anything themselves really, except for even not like Sami Zayn or what, yeah. <laughs> what's going on. They got the shit kicked out of them last night too, which was kind of weird, right? Like they did a run in, yeah, and then like they whoever beat up who was it? Kevin beat up Drew again, and they got got and just got beat up by him. I was like, wow, okay, well that works, I guess. Um, there is one team they could wrestle. Hit Row. <laughs> Hit Row are back. In all seriousness, I do have a take on this. I think, um, <laughs> what's, his, what's his fed name? To who he, Miles, was his fed name? What's his name? Ash- Ashanto the... Adonis. Yeah. Adonis, yeah, right? I genuinely think he may have like, the best look in wrestling. It's my take. It's been a take of mine since I watched 205 Live. In like 2021, I was like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" Because it's like he walked off a magazine front cover. Um, I think he's got an amazing look. I do not know if he's any good wrestling. I'm going to assume he's not, based on the way Monty responded to my discussion here. Uh, Top Dollar is very funny on Twitter. Take that how you will. Um, in all seriousness, mm-hmm. that is actually a nice piece of business. I think they're a very useful mid card tech team. I'm not even doing a bit. I, Top Dollar coming back his own, I had no interest in them as an act. The ceiling is infinitely lower about as well, but that isn't necessarily what you need. But you need to be a tag team, right? Well, yeah. I think that was your take on it. Is it fair to say that seeing it in action, you're even more bullish on that take? 
Yeah, again, like they released 100 people in the past couple of years or whatever, and I'm not defending it. Obviously, it's their own fault, but like they need to just kind of build depth and build tag teams. And that's what kind of a lot of these signings are doing. Like, there's been a lot of people dealing in absolutes be like, oh, you know, that's not a signing that's going to move the needle or whatever, but that's not really what they're going for for the most part. Hear that, Monty? Stop dealing absolutes, you piece of shit. What do you think of the hit row being back? I guess it's okay for depth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's what it is, right? How often it's a, you're it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a fun act, I guess. It's nice act, yeah. I like it. But I do have concerns that I wouldn't say publicly. Um, yeah. It's about the music. In... No, I'm just going to put it in the chat now. All right. Monty, how often when you're driving around listening to like you know the late night grin and stuff like that, do you just, just throw hit roll on for a minute there, you know? How often does that happen? Um, <laughs> worrying, bro. <laughs> All, right, <that's> <laughs> All right, anyway, so the, the, the women's <laughs> tag team title tournament is rolling here. Uh, Alia and Raquel Rodriguez advanced. How did this one go, Bob? Um, it was fine. I mean, listen, the SmackDown side of the bracket's a little weaker than the Raw side. I think, you know, for, for who was in it and for what they had, it was fine. Monty, I feel like you thought this was bad. That's my instinct. Being your friend, I will feel that you would think this was bad. And you'd be correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Shotzi your least favorite wrestler on TV? Serious, serious question. Not on a personal level, like just to watch. I'm not obviously, you know, she seems like a good person. No, no. no. Kia Lions, good call. Um, do you know that Pete Dunn wrestled Drew Gulak as the pre-show match, the dark match? Pop. That rules. Take that, Gabe Sapolsky. Anyway, uh, how He's was Kerry? How was Kerry Cross's first night on the? Uh, you know, like being part of the roster. He did a promo. It was very long. I watched a bit of it. and I went, "Oh my god!" There's two minutes left of it. Uh, Monty, you're a big fan. Did you like this business? Um, <laughs> big fan. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you said, it was very long. It was yeah. it, at the end of the day, it was just like law. You know, it was, um, but like it was very long. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it was it was whatever, man. You know, yeah. if you're gonna dunk on Karrion Cross for doing law, law, you're gonna dunk on this. You know, um, yeah, it's it was whatever. <laughs> Bob, this feels like something that would make you actively mad. True. Yeah. Um. So I didn't. I didn't get to watch SmackDown while it was airing the first time. So I just skipped over this when I uh, got to watch it finally. Um, <laughs> they did say that Scarlet is Cross's Oracle, though. Which, that popped me. That's interesting. Yeah. We could do a lot with that, Paul. That's good stuff. I'm glad you announced yeah. that. Is does Cross look better with the hair or without? I've been debating this in my mind. Without, obviously. I don't know about that. I think he definitely looks better without. I think he's got some leading man energy now. I'm, 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 I'm coming around to this idea, Monty. I really am, Bob. What do you think? Split, split us on this. This is an interesting conversation. Chat, hair or no hair? I don't think I'm really used to him with hair yet, to be honest with you. Make your mind up, Bob. This is not a time for you know sit on the fence. What Probably without. Thinking? It feels like historically, like bald wrestlers are better, but Bob. it's only really Stone Cold and Goldberg that jump out. So. That's <laughs> disgusting, bro. That's disgusting. I think, I don't know, man. I think it's something to be said for it. Anyway, Saturday night's main event, the latest in a series of fabulous live event specials from the World Wrestling Federation. I will now read through the card. Bob, you will give me a star rating estimate. Monty, you will do the same. Are we ready? Okay. Bianca Belair, Asuka, opener. Bobby. Uh, Four. Monty. On Saturday night main event. Um... <laughs> Don't overthink it, man. <laughs> <laughs> three, three, three quarters. Gunter and Ricochet, Monty. Three and a quarter. Bob. Uh, three and a half. Veer Mahan and R Truth. <laughs> Bob. Five. <laughs> Monty. Good. Can we talk about the fact this is a super show, including both brands? And they're sort of like, man, you got to get Veer on there somewhere. People come to see him. He's going to beat um, Lashley, man. Got to oh, start warming him up. Was that warm last night? I just didn't. Like... 
by the way, I actually Why? said this. I was in a grin along. He looked fine. I don't yeah. want to dunk him. I'm just saying there's a lot of guys that don't make the Super Show, so this being on is funny, objectively. You know, yeah. not a knock on beer. Uh, Seth frickin' Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. Monty, star are you? Main event. No. Post-intermission match, brother. 3.4. Match. Wow. Bobby? Yeah, probably three and a half. Bob Lash over Miz and Fury. <laughs> Bob. Uh, two and a half. Monty. One point seven four. <laughs> Ronda and Shayna over Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez, Monty. <laughs> oh. One point five. Bob. Why are you not joining in on this? <laughs> I don't just call cool. I'm not hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara here. Yeah, probably about one point five. In the main event. A six-man street fight. Tag team street fight. Trios, brother. Sheamus and the Usos up against Madcap Moss and the Street Profits. <laughs> the street fight, you know. Um... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Pass. Why is that the main event? <laughs> Why doesn't Esker and Bianca close the show or Seth and Dolph, bro? What yeah. the fuck? I don't know. Well, what's your star rating? Uh, two and a half. All right. Monty, I'll look you in at five. I'll okay. have a look if anything changed on the Sunday stunner. Um, ah, hold the phone. On the Sunday stunner, what they did was they started it as a straightforward trios match, did a DQ finish, and then said, we're turning it into an Atlantic City street fight. There we go. You had a little bit of juice. That's Adam Pierce at work there as the head of live. So this had a little bit. Jeff Jarrett said, did one of these gimmicks to Jay Uso, and away mm. we went. <clears throat> All right. We're at Raw now. Raw has gone 8.47. <laughs> An 8.47 on Cage Match. This, I believe, was the latest entry of the G1 Climax this year. Um, I watched this show live and the Jimmy had a stroke in the third hour because I forgot how long these shows were in like real time. I haven't watched one live in a long time. Um, I genuinely don't know, and I before I go any further, I thought the show was obviously very good. I even rewatched bits of it today because I couldn't remember much of it because streaming <laughs> bad idea. I'll do it more often, but bad idea. This format of like every match trying to be good is genuinely jarring for me in a way that I've legitimately not adjusted to. Like Miz and Champ are doing a tag match and trying to make it good is uncomfortable. You know? <laughs> I can't deal with it. Like. It's like a random hour one tag and they do like a finishing sequence. And it's like fucking weird, man. Like all of this is good. I'm not saying any of this be critical, but it's like, it's genuinely strange. WWE was so fucking weird before Triple H that I'm now like thrown off by people having good matches. It's weird. I don't know what to say about it. Well, do you understand what the fuck I'm talking about right now? It's strange. Why is everyone oh, yeah. trying to have good matches on this show? It's raw. Yeah, because I mean, I thought Raw's been mostly fine this year, but yeah. everyone's kind of elevated the in ring stuff uh, in a big way the past few weeks. I don't know Bobby. if they're. I know, I think I read they were able to call it in the ring now more, so maybe that adds a little bit to it. But like, just yeah, everyone's, everyone's elevating their game, man. Mustafa Ali did a 450 into a sliding knee for the Fridge. Yeah. You know, I won. Just because, because it's a match, man. Fuck it. It's trying to have a good one. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Monty, how do you feel about the wrestling centric room? I mean, objectively, the show's been really good the last few years, but it is. People that are saying it ain't different. Like, bro, this show was packed with just dudes trying to have like good matches over a lot of time. Seriously, it's very different, right, Monty? Yeah, it's very different. Uh, the match times is like, you know, the numbers don't lie, I guess. Yeah. Some of the matches you could even shave a couple of minutes off. When was the last time you could say that about multiple matches on an mm. episode of Raw? So there's that, which is the clear stuff. And, you know, just the level of work and. You know, like you said, <laughs> Miz trying to <laughs> Miz trying to partake and finish his sequences and make it hot. And you know, everyone is uh everyone's working the socks off, as we say. Um crowd loved it too, know. by the way, didn't they? The crowd loved it last night. I, I rewatched it over sound and the crowd was like really rocking for some of those matches. Like that Owens Drew one, 
Yeah. Holy shit, man. They mm-hmm. really got that was a good match. Even with the DQ finish, it was still yeah. good, you know? Absolutely. I, I loved it. We'll get into that in a second. This, this work our way through this kind of rigid, more traditional format. Uh, the women's tag title tournament match, Asker and Alexa over Dewdrop and Nikki. I thought there was a chance of shenanigans here. I, in hindsight, glad they didn't. I want to see this match next week. I think it's going to be a good time. This was where it was. Um, the audience got with it. I loved the placement of opening match because it allowed them to have a fresh crowd. No, it blow away, but I thought it was a nice tag match. Bob, what did you think? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I also thought that, you know, Dewdrop and Nikki could win, but it's yeah. it's not that dissimilar to when they used to do, like, two pay-per-view tag matches, or, like, the main event with Raw would be two guys in a pay-per-view match, uh, you know, on tag, on opposite sides. I think yeah. you get what I'm going for here. Yeah, um, okay. You're fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so it's not that different than that, and they're clearly kind of loading up Raw next week because they're returning to Canada. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good match. I think so. I'm excited for it. Monty, what do you think of this one, mate? Yes. It was okay. Yeah. You know? It was what it was. Um I saw I saw a video going around on Twitter on the timeline of um you know the spot when Dewdrop uh she kind of uh <laughs> Do you the cut off? <laughs> when, when, when <laughs> she she hits Alexa up the post on the outside. Bro. And she protects her head and you can Why? tell. <laughs> last night, if you go and watch the grin along from last night, I had a live reaction to that because they they did the thing where they just shine, went to the ad, and then they came back in the heat and was like during the break they did that thing right. So I was like, I was talking in the chat, I was like, hang on, wait a second, I want to see this cut off, and I looked up, and fucking whoever told Alexis she was taking that post spot did not. I mean, <laughs> she must have been like, yeah, good one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> it was very funny, but yeah, I mean, you can't. I, I mean, Dudra, I think is so. She's almost overly safe sometimes, fair to say, right? Which, God bless you, that's the biggest Christmas you can have, but it was a funny spot. Carry on, Mon. Yeah, it was it. Not much to say, to be honest. It was okay. Yeah. And, you know, obviously the big one will be the match next one there. Well, not the big one, but, you know, for the tournament, I guess. I think so, yeah. It's the biggest match of the tournament, unless, obviously, Sasha and Naomi enter at some point. Um, it's interesting how we've all talked about a turn, and I've actually talked about a turn on both sides. I was talking about this last night. I really think there's something to be said for these two being a team. I re- I'm I'm kind of bullish on if you look at the division right now and how many women need a sh- like I need a push and need a spotlight. Asker and Alexa are so established. You can always go to them if you're in a pinch and you need to get a single star ready. But what do you really have that's fresh for evil woman? Is there not something to be said, Bobby, for them just being a babyface team the audience likes them both. What do you think, Bob? My nuts here. Yeah, especially if they're gonna, you know, bring the women's tag titles back, and uh, you need teams to chase them. That was kind of the problem they ran into: established teams, and uh, they would definitely be an established one and give them something to do. Monty, you're a snickering. What, what are you laughing at now? Look, it felt like you was cutting a promo, and you were like, "Am I crazy?" And because Bob always starts with "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm all crazy. Yeah, man. But, um, <laughs> what do you think, uh, Monty? Seriously, am I on the same here? Am I not? It was a good promo. Um, I'm you very good. good pro- you, cut, you cut a good promo on us. <laughs> you sold me on it, you know? What do you, what do you reckon? Are you in on ready this? To, ready to buy the match? No, they look nice. They do look good together. I think he, he's, um, you know, especially with Alexa, look, she's not going to go out there and look work overly hard you know uh so a tag tag spot is pretty nice for uh, asuka is good enough to you know take the chunk of the match you know <laughs> and um you know the both the both are established stars and if you need a single star like you said you can just kind of call on one of them if you need them to put someone yeah. over or do something or whatever um yeah, it's probably a nice fit for both of them, especially if they do get the tag titles um, going like we hoped pretty much when the first brought them in, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think the matches are so easy too because you just get heat on Alexa and then like Asuka's hot tag is like the yeah. best possible hot tag in the division, you know, and like it's a cool deal. And look, is that the best usage of either of them in a vacuum? No. But that isn't necessarily how wrestling works. Sometimes you need folks to play a role for the sake of a division. And I think there's an argument this is the best role for both women at this current moment. That can change. Now, again, we've already pitched Lex turning here. I've pitched Asuka joining control, so on and so forth. All good ideas, all worth exploring perhaps down the line. 
but I can't help but feel there's something to be said for this team. I'm not sure that'll be the case, by the way. I think we're going to get an angle sooner than later on that front, but mm. we shall see. I thought it was a nice match. Not much more, but a nice match nonetheless. I've already mm-hmm. mentioned this Miz business. Um, Cedric and Ali are a really strong babyface team. I think they should actually get a lot out of them for TV action. This Champ and Miz deal is like kind of fascinating and I feel like I should hate it, but I think it actually kind of works. Because both guys have thrown themselves into it. Oh, this match was damn good, honestly. Um, I was kind of blown away by how much I enjoyed like the, <laughs> the last few minutes that I was referencing earlier. Bob, what did you uh, what did you think of it, pal? It was great. Um, you know, for for just kind of a thrown together team and uh, Cedric and Ali, I think they worked really well together. I'd like to see more of them. But uh, yeah, this Miz and Champ thing. Like, I was never a big Champa guy in NXT. In the past three or four weeks, he's uh, kind of completely turned my opinion around. Um, I actually see something there now. Um, and I think part of the thing people are into with this team is, uh, you know, it's pretty clear that one of them is going to turn on the other just because they both have doing that. It's just mm-hmm. a matter of, you know, which one it's going to be and then what comes from that. Um, but, yeah, it's been great. Well, I think so, Monty. What do you think of the uh, the thrilling Miz tag team match we got here in our one? It just like, caught me off guard, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, was just, it, was an, it was a good match, man. Uh, Obviously, we already kind of touched on it earlier, and they, you know, they went for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they went out there and tried to have a really solid, good tag match. You know, um, sort of sh- the sort of shit you'd see on AEW, to be honest. Very it's just so. that, like, it's just it's funny that Miz is involved in something of such. Yes, he is. You know? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it was it was good stuff. It was good stuff. The uh, Champ and Miz tag team is, you know, it's just kind of waiting. For something mm-hmm. to, you know, waiting for them to implode or do whatever they're going to do with it now, to be honest. But, you know, they've had a few decent matches and, you know, like you said, they've both thrown themselves into it, especially Champion. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, up next, we're going to talk about the thing that stole the show, the thing that stole the headlines. And with that in mind, we're bringing in a heavy hitter, expert WWF analyst. <laughs> Jack Crosby is here once again, folks. Stop. He's here. Nice. We're talking about Monday Night Raw. Kevin yeah, Owens segment is up next. Wait, what is uh, the Kevin Owens segment? I don't know if you heard about it. It's a pretty big deal. Him and Drew McIntyre, they had this whole deal. Did you Wait, see I, this, Jack? I was pumping my fist. I was pumping my fist. Well, let's get right into it, Jack Crosby. What did you think of this whole segment, <laughs> this whole match? This was an incredible piece of TV, pal. What did you think? Isn't it great how th- when you have two guys who are really good on the microphone hmm. and you just let them go for a little bit, Maybe tell them to hit a few bullet points if you want to, which there's nothing wrong with that. But just tell them to hit a few notes. Tell them to go out there and have some fun on those microphones. Isn't it crazy what could happen? Because it's th- Kevin's Kevin. The thing that stood out to me is, you know, for the longest time, like good for Drew that they were treating him like a top guy. But what they also do with top guys is they have to hit those, they have to hit those cliches and oh, yeah. talk in a certain manner. Mm-hmm. Or something. Drew McIntyre is very good on the microphone when you let him go. He's very right. good. And he got to show that last night. Like mm-hmm. that retort he had for Kevin was perfect because if you still had writers doing that, Kevin would have buried him. Yeah. And Drew would have been like, there, there would have been, his hands would have been tied. He has a baby so face. When they yeah. told Drew, all right, if Kevin comes at you with that, you go back at him. And mm-hmm. Drew was perfect. And then, and then of course, yeah, wrestling, wrestle, wrestle, wrestlers, wrestling, wrestles. Come on, let's do the wrestles. <laughs> <laughs> we'll circle back to the match. Um, Bob, you famously love Drew McIntyre. What do you think of this promo segment? Yeah, I think it ruled. Uh, I think he did a really good job uh, kind of getting over it. Because the thing is with Drew, like, he's been missing something, I think, as a top babyface. And this kind of goes Andrew. goes a long way in uh, getting him there, I think. They let him do more of this. Uh, it'd be good. The challenge will be letting him do the fiery promos without making them like redundant where he kind of goes in circles. Like mm-hmm. you don't want to do it every week where he screams about wrestling. Cause he'll come across like a nerd in that way, but you need to find that like his challenge has always been the balance, right? Like being fired mm-hmm. up and not being um, a caricature himself. Monty, what do you think of the promo segment that got a lot of buzz on twitter.com? What'd you think? Monty? Yeah. I saw it the next day and kind of got um, understood what all the buzz was about, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Drew, Drew's, Drew's not on Kevin's level when it comes to promos, but he definitely hung with him uh, mm. last night. That's for sure. He was obviously the whole lot of the segment, I guess. <clears throat> mm. 
Mm-hmm. There is something to be said as Drew kind of missing something as a true top, top, top guy. Yeah, I think he just needs to do just a little bit of refining, you know. Um, I don't know, man. There, there's just he said quite he ticked, off, I agree. He, yeah. yeah, he ticked all the boxes on paper, you know, but there's just something I, I don't know, man. Oh, he's always I really, like, really like Drew as well. He's like a great. To me, he's like a guy that you use to lose to your top guy. And I don't know if they've got enough top guys for him to be that for them. I prefer him him much more as a heel as well. Yeah, but I think that's kind of an industry-wide issue we have, I fear, you know? We do that with everyone now, it feels like. I know, yeah, but Drew, when Drew was first coming up on the main roster and he was just like, oh, heavy, uh, like, that was... um... I, I think there's an argument, to be honest, that you flip these two and they're actually, like... More natural. Like Kevin's a great villain, but the crowd loves mm-hmm. Kevin. Mm-hmm. I just say, you say that. Jack, where do you stand yeah, on like, like in actuality? Like we always talk about who should dethrone Roman Reigns. In theory, yeah. Like a baby face Kevin Owens is probably the perfect candidate. I think so. I know yeah. we all have that, but a big baby face Kevin is the yeah. perfect candidate to put Roman down. Do you remember the feud they had? Because I remember we talked about the distraction. And that's where it was great. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that, and that's where I wish I was like that was one of those things where I said, uh I said, you know, Roman shouldn't lose this title for a long, long time. But then as the feud yeah. kept going, I was like, you know what? I remember, I yeah. Probably wouldn't mind it <laughs> if Kevin just beat him. Yeah, we like were both in on that. Yeah, we we were in on like Kevin getting a Luger esque title win, where it's kind of like you can give it back, but this this give him the moment. Um, Jake, I want to give you a chance to talk about this because Joe brings right. out in the chat. Um, you were <laughs> sending some incredible messages today. You know, I saw some absolute effing dorks. On the timeline today about this contract tampering <laughs> stuff. Get the hell out of here. Delete, call, cancel your internet service. Delete all your social media. If this is the way you're going to act when this stuff is going on, get out. Turn in your wrestling fan card. And I'll say, yo, I, you know, I'm one of those guys, hey, what, what you like, you like, you know. So, no, if you're not in on this contract tampering stuff and don't think it's the greatest thing ever that someone from the WWF is calling up an AEW guy going, hey, man, so. You probably hate it there, don't you? What's that contract look like? What kind of lawyers are they? Are they using the Jaguars lawyers? Like who? Like are, are they concrete? Like how's it looking? <laughs> you want to come back? Like Team I want to Keith Keith call Lee. Roman Reigns and go, Big Joe, what are you doing over there? Huh? I'm coming out over here. <laughs> hey, Big Joe, come on, come on over here. No, there are some people like take. Well, we know how it is. Like, people take shit way too seriously. When it comes to wrestling, you yeah, know, I, mean, I don't yeah. know. Like, like wrestling is not to be taken as seriously as some of these people take, mm-hmm. and they were crying. Mm-hmm. I thought it was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I was like, oh, hold on, Triple H mm-hmm. walked in, and not only is he flipping the place upside down, but he is telling someone from talent relations, call so and so. So they go, Well, he works for AEW, and Triple H going, I don't give a fuck. Call him, <laughs> see what he's up to. I swear, bro. If it was actually a call to swerve to check in on the hit row thing, that is it, it lines up. I told you in text, it lines up though. Swerve so, lines up with everything that's been going on. Like they bring back hit row and then this comes out. I think Triple H thinks he had a really good relationship with Swerve, and Swerve absolutely doesn't like Triple H, which is an incredible bit that is like I think everyone can somewhat no, relate to. I, I think no, I think Swerve likes him. I think because you remember when Swerve got signed, you know, he doesn't. <laughs> Because I know Tony is willing to let Swerve do all these freaking yeah. things he wants yeah. to do. Yeah, so, absolutely. Swerve's, it, um, it's not Adam. Like, he didn't call it. It's not Adam. No way. Uh, Cole wouldn't have gone to TK. Absolutely not. No way. It's yeah, right. I don't, no, you know what? Kind of, yeah, I don't that's think the inter- that's that. the interesting part, I think. Is who went to Tony Yeah, it's like the tampering, not like, come on. Like anyone yeah. who's in as deep as most of us are knows that that definitely goes on. People talk, you know, yeah. um, absolutely both what going both ways. But the interesting thing is that he got back to TK and then got out through Sean as well. <laughs> Don't be a cop, Andrew, yeah. yeah that's Don't a call the cop. <laughs> like, whoever did that, like, whoever this person is, I don't care who it is, even if it's a wrestler I like. That's a real shitty thing. Don't call the cops, man. You listen like... to what Hunter, Bruce, or who. Oh, that's another thing I was thinking. Do you think that like Hunter made Bruce do this? So he's like, <laughs> if something bad happens, it's on you, you dumb shit. Oh, man. Bruce <laughs> calling up Swerve. Talent relations. He <laughs> probably made Bruce do it. 
In Jack's five minutes on this show, he has said two all-time great late-night grin quotes, one of which being, hand in your wrestling fan card, which I'm still reeling from. And then you just exclaimed, do not be a cop caller. <laughs> which, this man... Who, I mean, point, I, man. Yeah, me, me, the person who tags the royal family when I want to tell on you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get back to so the true business. Um, there's been a lot of debates about DQ finishes. We don't need to get into it all again. It doesn't bother me, but obviously that's fine. I bought the match itself for spectator. I actually rewatched it today after I got done with the burp. Uh, Monty, what do you think of this? What do you get? Like 20 minutes this, just shy of? Drew and Kevin Owens going out there and killing it. Two top guys having a great match. I bought Monty, what did you think? <clears throat> yeah, just a really good match. Um, you know, Drew apparently has a sore back. Don't know how he's doing it. <laughs> um, Kevin Owens as well, just the way that he bumps and everything. Um, mm -hmm. He does that splash to the outside, what feels like every match. I don't know how he does that. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, it was good. Of course, it was Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens. And like you said, it went, I think, over 15 minutes. Like, yeah, yeah, he had a DQ finish. finish. But this is the thing like, with DQ finishes as well. Like I said before, on, I think it might have even been this show. Uh, everything's case by case. And at the end of the day, we still got 16, 17 minutes, whatever it was. Of Kevin Kevin Owens versus Drew McIntyre, and the finish made sense in storyline, I guess. You know, so the other thing too is, while I get the sentiment, <clears throat> and I respect the sentiment of if you can't do a finish, don't book the match. The roster is not deep enough to have that approach. Sometimes you need to give people a good half an hour TV, and that's what this did. I'm like, it's three fucking hours, man. It's difficult. It's challenging. Yeah. Well, what do you think of the match? What do you think of the finish? So on and so forth. Yeah, I thought the match was great. Um, I'm really happy that Kevin Owens is kind of back to the version of him that I really enjoyed the most. Uh, really excited to see where that goes. We talked about that a little bit last week. Um, you know, the finish kind of is what it is. I didn't really go into it expecting a clean finish just because it is two top guys. Um, and I don't know what, you know, losing in the traditional sense would have done for either one. Yeah. So it, it doesn't bother me. I get why it bothers some people, but it was like a make or break thing for me. Jake, where do you stand on DQ finishes on TV? I feel like it's saying that I just kind of, I think it's part no, this, of the game. This, you know? one, this one, like Monty said, this one worked. Yeah. Like, this this one was fine. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of bullshit ones, especially in WWE, and there have been yes. for what, the last mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. But this one made sense because you at least got enough, more than enough of a taste of Kevin Owens versus Drew McIntyre, where mm -hmm. when it does happen down the road, yeah. you, you, you know what you're getting and you're waiting for a clean finish but you got more than enough of a taste of what these two can do together when given some time. And it, it, it pushed forward the story. Cause right now the, the feud is Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. It, it's not Kevin just yet. Kevin sent his right. message. It's true. So the Usos coming out and, and doing their thing. And plus you also planted the, some sort of seeds. I think, I still think even with this, I, that interaction with Kevin and the Usos at the end, I still think he and Sammy are beating them. Yeah, maybe. I still think that Kevin and Sammy are gonna dethrone those two. I didn't consider that part of it. That's interesting. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting thing to circle back to. Yeah, yeah. Um, Somebody said recently as well. I think. Yeah. Um, didn't get round to covering it just yet today, but there was a story going around about Kevin wanting to still win the tag team titles with um yeah. with Sammy Zayn. So. Oh, he has to. That, like that's got to be a goal for both those guys to do yeah. that together. Yeah, it still is. It still is and for both of them. If so. they could do it in a way where they end, what, what are the, what's the Usos' reign? One is like over 400 days, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then Raw is like 100 and something or something like that. But still, mm -hmm. like they have been champions for what, over 400 days or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think I think at this point, Kevin and Sammy are pre far like far and away the best option. I really do. I think that's that's the best. Way I don't think you're wrong. I, I just I wonder if it will get if it will fall to the wayside slide because I think they want to go with Kevin as like a top heel. And I think I mean, it may kind of yeah, that's where. Yeah. But but no, this is like um, I really enjoyed Kevin and Drew. They they work they worked really well together. So they'll meet again. But and like I said, yeah. now you you want to see what what ha, what kind of clean finish you get with the two of them. I think so. And I also think. The crowd's reaction to this was very positive in the sense that when they got the DQ, I didn't think it was the kind of heat where people shrugged. I thought they were into the whole thing of like, this see Drew kick the shit out of these heels, which is what you yeah. want. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Look, this is always going to be divisive. And if you're in the chat and I see a lot of, you know, Cop Powers saying so, I totally get if you see a DQ and it kills your investment. That's fine. We all have different, you know, kind of stumbling blocks and hurdles with wrestling TV. The only thing I'll say is, 
in six months, if they're doing this thing regularly, you can give them more shit than now because right now Triple H is playing with a certain set of cards and he legitimately has about six top guys. <laughs> and you need to give your TV show at some point is going to need to have some good promos and good wrestling. And this was a way to give the show, I thought clearly it's best segment or best yeah. free segments, you know, and that's what it was about. I don't know. Yeah. That's really where triple. That's where it really gets tricky for Triple H. Like we talked last week about how easy everything is for him, yeah. but where it's going to get tricky is this is still the honeymoon period. Like Triple H, yeah. and I'm going to stick mm-hmm. up for him. Like he, you're right. He is in a position where he's like, all right, but you guys, like, I'll give you surprises and stuff like that, but you have to give me time to build my top stars. It's tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you, you have to give me time. So right now, I have to use Roman. I have to use Drew. I'll give Kevin the bump that he needs, but you guys have to be patient with me and give me time to build this. And I think some people aren't going to be as patient. Like we, we, there's going to be that aren't going to be patient. Yeah. But you got to give the guy time. Like I mean, in an ideal world, I think we can all agree: Kevin beats a mid card guy, and Drew beats an upper mid card guy, and that's that's fine. Those guys just aren't. They don't really exist on the show right now. <laughs> yeah. Like the main event of the show is Dolphin Fury, man. Like. They ain't got that much star power. It just is what, and this is the truth. Four or five weeks is spot. DQ finishes are a thing because they've done them so much. They've burned mm-hmm. the audience on them. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, yeah. that's right. the issue of a reboot is you have to kind of live with the rules that, you know, it's hard. But you're right. Absolutely correct on that. It's interesting. I don't know. Um, nonetheless, a great segment. We all agree. Awesome stuff from both men. Um, Bobby Lashley and AJ Styles, I thought, was also tremendous. I didn't think it was quite as good as that, but it was very, very good. AJ and Bobby are, um, I believe, the combined age showing the chat last night. So they're 91 combined <laughs> combined age for these two gentlemen. <laughs> um, Bob, two of your favorites. I know two of mine, too. A great U.S. title match. What do you think, Bob? Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I was surprised how much time they got. Uh, yeah. Felt like it kept going, and it wasn't a bad thing. Um, yeah. yeah, they just both went all out, and I was really hyped up for it. You know, they somehow have never wrestled before. Um and yeah, I think it delivered. And again, it's doing a really good job kind of propping up that US title where he's defending it every week on TV against, you know, other established guys and uh, you know, it'll mean something if and when he loses it. Yeah. Absolutely. Monty, where did you stand on this? I saw this match was somewhat polarizing on the web. Where did you where did you come in on this one? Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Um... Mm-hmm. Probably at the start when I said a few of the matches could have done with a couple of minutes shaving off. This was uh, one a full of the, yeah, yeah. I get you. It was um as Bob said, it kept, it kind of kept going, and I'm in a different boat where I didn't think that was a good thing, really. <laughs> um, I saw that. Discussion. Yeah, it, it was it was it was okay. It was okay. It was all yeah. right, you know. Um, they're both in the late 40s, you know. Um, I don't crazy. think we need to be seeing them have a... Uh... Oh, then again, it was for the title, you know. It, it, it was, it was, it it was it compelling was TV. I, I don't know, Jack, where do you stand on this? I guess, I guess to kind of play Peacemaker here, the time yeah. allotted for that match would have been better if it was the main event. Yeah. But, Monty, yeah. would you have felt better if it was the last match on the show? Would you have felt better about the time? Gives it more like an epic punch yeah. to it, yeah. I would have felt better. If, I would have felt better about the time if it was a a better match. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I thought one of the problems they had. This was my watching it live, and I didn't rewatch this, so I could be wrong. But I was trying to stream and watching it. But one of the issues I thought they had was there was a couple of ideas they established early. Like he went for Bobby's leg, and Bobby went, you know, AJ's back. And I thought the last stretch of it, they were just doing moves and kicking out of them, and it, it to me lost sort of any, which is fine. I mean, it was you know still exciting, but. I've always lost substance in that way. Jack, where did you come in on this mm-hmm. uh, this US title match? I thought it was fine. I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't really have any problems with it. Um, I, I just, I, I think, you know, the, the thing is, I'm not, I wasn't focused so much on match quality right. as much as I just love what they're doing with Bobby in that title. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, regardless <laughs> of what, I just, fuck, I, I love what they're doing with Bobby in that title. Yeah. So even if I do like, I'm like, ah, the match was match was, ah, it was all right. I'm still like, but still like, at the end of it, when the bell rang, you looked at Lashley and you're like, dude, you keep going, just keep going, mm-hmm. keep going, keep going. And now he's racking on Champa Styles. Now you're starting to wonder yeah. who's next. Like, who else is he? And he's he's gonna keep adding names to the list until somebody finally gets him. I love how blatantly 
obvious. Triple H has been with reestablishing the mid card titles. Like it's yeah, so exactly. like overtly obvious that that is what he's trying to do and keep it's doing it. <laughs> because he knows, like, he knows, like, our section of wrestling fans, like, for, for casual fans or families that, you know, are just there because their kids like wrestling, it's just like an added bonus. Yeah. But he knows that he's going to hit the, the hearts of us nerds when he throws out these video packages talking about yeah. how important. He knows he's going to do that. Yeah. So the, 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 the casual type fans and families, stuff like, oh, okay, well, look at that. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Whereas we're going, <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. The U.S. championship. That was Dusty Rhodes. Lex Dusty. Rhodes, yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Dusty because I had the exact same experience. I was like, no, oh, my, 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 all-time, my all-time U.S. champion is, is still Lex. I mean, that, yeah. was, that, was around, that was around when I was little watching wrestling. And uh, nobody looked better with the that NWA US title than Lex. It just fit him. So that's the like heel run when he works Pillman and stuff, right? That run. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, like that Lex with that end. Of, like no, no belt has ever fit a wrestler better than that US yeah. title fit Lex Luger. That's a very well, underrated run that as an adult. Yeah, that's fair. that's a very underrated run. To be clear, it's worth noting we kind of picked a lot. Of, people really like the Bobby and AJ match. I saw it some debate about it in like the nerdy circles that you know. We were in, but people really liked it. It's not like it was, you know, Bob's not. Yeah, it was, a, not, it was like a nice it was, little match. It was, yeah. yeah, I get you. I understand. Um, I was really happy as a big fan of Dakota Kai with what she yeah. did last night. I loved Dakota, but one of my very few criticisms I would ever give Dakota was as a heel. I thought she was too selfless. I thought she could have been more physical and more ruthless. She kicked the shit out of Diana Brooke last night. She was doing quarter kicks and like mm-hmm. fucking being mean. Obviously, part of that's the booking. They only give them a couple minutes, and I'm sorry, but rightly so. That's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, I was really happy with what Dakota did here as like a bully heel. Money, what did you think? Yeah, I really loved pretty much everything Dakota did on the show last night. Like, um, even the little promo that she done before the match when she kind of like int- intimidated Dana Brooke and was really dismissive, or dismissive, or dismissive of her. Mm. Um, yeah, man, and like you said, in the match, you just kind of kicked the shit out of her. Uh, Kawada yeah. kicks, pop. It was, uh, yeah, man, I was a big fan of what Dakota was doing last night. A good time for sure. I will say that, um, you know, the promo stuff, while Dakota's thing was solid, I want them to give them their own, like, promo style or vibe, you know? Like, it doesn't have to be as extreme as, like, an NWO pre-tape. But I want control. Do you remember how Shield used to have their um, the like the self recorded promos? Do you remember this was a thing? Yeah. Like Ambrose would have like the camera, and he'd be like, it would give them a different feel. Yeah, Ch- Champa to- done it in NXT too. There you go. I don't it's want it to be. It doesn't have to be extreme. I've found their first few weeks of promos to be a little bit. It could be anyone, and that's not why because mm-hmm. I want them to be bigger than that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, they're not bad. I, just, I find it would be a little bit cookie cutter. I want a little bit of innovation on that front. But nonetheless, Bob, what do you think of Dakota getting the big squash match win? Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I saw some people upset that Dana didn't get more time or get more offense. And it's just like, that's how you're going to build roster roles. Like, you're going to have to do stuff like this. That's It's fine. You know, not everyone's on equal footing. And they can't be. Like, no. that's the problem they've run into the past few years where everyone on the roster is basically the same. And you need roster roles. Especially with the women. That's yeah. a huge issue with the way they put women. It feels like anyone can beat anyone on any given week. Like Tamina can pin Bailey on any given week. It's felt like let's get let's get away from that. Let's have some hierarchy. Let's have some levels to the roster. I spoke about this last night, but I'm absolutely unquestionably believing this. If Vince was booking this exact program, Dakota would have beat Alexa last week, or done a tag match last week, or done the trios okay. match last week. They're taking their time, and it's going to add to it. I thought this was the right move. Jack, what do you think of? Um, Dakota slaughtering poor Dana Brooke here in a couple minutes. I love the way they're presenting Dakota. Yeah. I love it. Cause like, can you imagine if she was brought up to the, like imagine that everything went smoothly with her and she was brought up to the main roster under Vince. Can you, can you oh, imagine fuck. how she would have been portrayed? I'd rather not. <laughs> can you imagine? But Hunter's just like, no, you're a killer. Go out there and be a killer. Yeah. I'm really hopeful about this tag match next week, guys. I think, yeah. they can, I think they can do something with this, you know? Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be heated as well, bro. I think the crowd's going to be really into it. it. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah. 100%. There was a moment on this on the opener of this show, which we were talking about before Jack got here, but 
There was a moment where like the baby face was shining and the crowd was just like popping when Asker and Alexa tagged in. <laughs> it was yeah. like, fuck man, like that if you do that match right, it could really get over in the building, which would be much, big for much, the bills. How much time is Hunter gonna give them? Fifteen? I think they'll go ten. I was gonna say twelve, but like the idea of doing fifteen and doing like double heat sounds fucking awesome. Like, could you imagine? Because he's definitely gonna give them time. Like that's. I'll be honest with you guys. I would walk up to Michael Pierce Hayes and I'd say, "Convince one of them to run the razor." <laughs> Tonight's the night. Needs it, bro. They've been brawling every week. Who? Uh, could you imagine they did like a post cut off on elections? You came up with fucking juice. Could you? Could you imagine the response? I mean, Oscar definitely would. So you, you can't like it like to be fair, you don't even have to have them run the razor. You could have them do like the remember Roman did like the shitty fake blood thing. Do that, that's fine. I don't need them to cut themselves. But seriously, would that not rule in all seriousness? In the middle of the heat segment, Alexa comes back with fucking blood, Asuka makes a if hot one day. of those if one of those women blade, then yeah. at the end of the match, Triple H's music needs to hit and he <laughs> needs to walk to that ring and do like the NXT the hug thing. Bring some flowers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They've been brawling every week. That's all. Like I think it'd be, it'd be, it'd be a cool deal. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get into this another time. We'll get into this another time. Um, main event: Fury and Dolph Ziggler. I, this was, I think, a sign of things to come. I think it's pretty clear the third hour is kind of going to be like your B plus main event. <clears throat> it's not stuff they're punting on, but like I think they're going to kind of train the audience that the third hour is not essential. So firstly, Bob, what do you think of that move? And then what do you think of this match specifically? Yeah, I don't think it's a bad move at all. Um, you know, you talked about watching the whole show kind of live, and it does start to drag after a while. Um, you know, less than it used to. I think they're paced better. Uh, they flow a lot better. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's a long time, man. And, uh, you know, people want to go to bed and all that. And it's better to kind of front load the show. I agree. The one thing they have to do on the pacing front, watching it last night live, I really noticed, is like they've got – make those segments, those backstage segments less cookie cut. Because they when they do like three of them in a row, it's like exhausting. It feels like you've not seen a match in ages. You know, yeah. that's one thing that really stood out to me. Um Monty, what do you think of the raw main event, pal? Just... <laughs> yeah. Dolph work. This show this show could have had another match on it. Yeah. I don't disagree. Um... Roster's pretty thin though, so who would it have been? <laughs> <laughs> the Judgment Day. I don't know, man. Ray didn't wrestle this week. Yeah, but they did the same. Um, with Rhea, you know, you know me, Joe. I love my weekly Ray Junior match. He shot an angle with Rhea though, which is building to a bigger match. You know. Yeah, of course. I know that would be an incredible yeah. piece of business. It was too long, right? Is the point you're, <laughs> point you're making here? Dolph worked very hard. Can we can we agree on that much? He tried. Yeah, he, he he really has been since. Um, yeah, I agree. This. Wait, you know, when he's motivated, he goes for it, you know? And when he's just on the main roster existing, he's just kind of, he'll still give you a good match, you know, a yeah. good performance, solid, because he's just a pro, you know? Mm-hmm. But, you know, when he gets fired up and he's Matt wrestling with Chad Gable and he's having main events with fucking the Money in the Bank winner and, you know, he's, he's fired up. He's, yeah. he's, you know, got love for Dolph, but this was a bit, I think it's just, I think it's theory. You know, I just can't warm to him. Yeah, he's um, like a blank slate, man. It's tough. It's okay, even some of the things that he does that's impressive, like that thing when he dives through the ropes and does the drop kick, like he always oh, gets really good. Oh, yeah. He always gets really good height on it. Um, it's a forward I roll in his he... offense, bro. We gotta get rid of that. Can we ban that? Yeah. People doing forward rolls into a move. What the fuck is it's, that? Um, Why did you invent that shit? That's terrible. It's no basic physics. Like it. it... It doesn't basic matter. Physics, <laughs> yeah. You just have to have to have like a third grade understanding of science to know that that doesn't matter. <laughs> basic physics understanding. There yeah. you go. Yeah, I'm with you though. I fear he's very. I find him very tough to to find interesting. Again, they don't give a shit. They don't had care. Kid Peg since he was 21 years old. Yeah. What did you get the match? He check? was. He was uh, it was fine. Like I like I said last week, and like uh, Monty just said too. I like this Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. And it's like just little tweaks to him too. Yeah. That like I I don't mind see I love seeing him every week now. I shouldn't mm-hmm. say don't mind. I love seeing him every week because yeah. the dude's out there working his ass. Like he always worked his ass off, but now he seems like there's some kind of different motivation there or something. I think so. He's he's having fun, man. I think he really like he's enjoying yeah. this run. You know, uh, I would like to say that while 
it was not fun for me to endorse fake blood. I slow, I wanted to pull my punch because I was aware that I was like talking with glee about women cutting themselves on TV, and I kind of went, "Well, this you know just rang myself in a little bit." So I was just printing as an option. I mean, I'd still want Michael Hayes to pitch running the razor, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to force anyone. It's, it's tough TV wrestling. You know I mean? Again, it, it'd have to be not Oscar. Oscar's too obvious. Like she'll definitely. It has it. to be Alexa. It has to be one of the other three. It's got to be a baby face, and Oscar's it, she's gonna have the pain. It's got to be Alexa, post spot, you know what I mean? Like Oscar Eo, Eo Eo would fucking rule though as well. It's got to be a baby face. We know this. No, I don't know. Well, I don't know, man. I, I, you know what? I don't know. Dakota running the razor would be pretty badass. She's, like, that would be cool. But the problem is, that's yeah. the issue. It's cool, right? Like, people would immediately cheer her. It'd be fucking awesome. She's already cool as it is. It's true. He's be a baby, Bob. You have to, you have to ask her. It's got to be Alexa. Well, how would Alexa Bliss explain to Ryan Cabrera what running the razor is? Can you Bob, you were, Bob, you're at the wedding. How does that go? <laughs> He's got to tell him what's up, man. Business is business. <laughs> business is business. He's got sixty five thousand people out there. She's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be so funny when like next week's match is like a seven minute just TV match. <laughs> no, yeah, no juice right. whatsoever. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a hell of a deal. Anyway, um, let's put a bow on this. We don't need a preview NXT. It's too late. Let's leave that. I'll just put it this way. Where do we stand currently? Look at Monty's rage. Us not previewing Heat Wave. It's fine. No one cares. Wait, what? What is it? Heat, NXT Heat Wave's on tonight. What the fuck is that? It's a love letter to Extreme Championship oh, Wrestling. Oh, is Little Steiner wrestling uh, Devlin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck that shit, man. What else? <laughs> Fair. Apparently, um, the, it's going to be a newsworthy show. Oh, I'm not sorry. Um, again. Joe, oh, I'll be on it. No, I'm not gonna because the thoughtful select report only dropped like five minutes ago. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna read chat. it out now. Yeah, but if Triple H comes out, but just know that. No, what, tr- Joe, uh, my favorite wrestler might be debuting in America today. You know, you know how little Steiner broke that gold X. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? The, well, oh, my wife will be happy. Loves, she loves oh, that fuck. Dude. Monty got me really excited for saying interest in there. It was a fucking yeah. Brit. Um, mm. Now, what if Triple H comes back, comes so, out, like little signers there celebrating, and Triple H just like glues that X back together? <laughs> it's like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would rule. <laughs> yeah, that's not newsworthy at all, Monty. Bless your heart. You really got me excited there. I thought Braun Strowman was going to come out on NXT. That's a shame. Anyway, this well, is better. no, I I see what Hunter's doing. I see what's going on there. It's fine. It's a good move. I just like who could possibly care. That, that I mean? that's step one of a three step process. My God, is the tampering involved in the three steps? No, no, but I wish there was, man. Yeah. I, I like. I really need to, like. Can, like, can Tony call? I do. I want him to just call Roman. I mean, just like just tweet, just, you know, just do tweet him. But I'll fire it up. Tweet about. I just called Big Joe Anoa'i. Said, what, "What's the contract look like, brother?" <laughs> Wait, are you saying that he would he would do it and then tweet it? That fucking rules. Yeah. He just got off the phone with Roman Reigns. <laughs> um, what else is on this heat wave thing? Hang on, what's this? Did Bob ask Joe to guess what the panel on WWE Rivals was? Oh be? yeah, have you heard about this show? It's on after the uh, A&E biography things. Yeah, but no. didn't they do another WWE versus WCW one for the 18 billion time? They did, yes. But the panel is incredible because I'm not even going to make you guess. I'm just telling you the panel. All right. Um, <laughs> so Freddie Prince Jr. hosts it, right? And uh, oh. it's Kevin Nash, Kofi Kingston, Tamina, <laughs> and uh, – Hold on, hold on. Slow down. Who are the other two? All right, Tamina. No, but wait. Freddie Prince Jr., Kevin Nash, Kofi Kingston. Yeah, Why is Tamina there? And then uh, JBL's there too. He's the other one. Uh, Yeah. No, all right. But anyway, something tells me that the banter between Kevin Nash and Kofi Kingston is going to be awesome. Yeah. Probably. You know, JBL is going to like once a week talk about how Tamina was actually a good worker and he's underrated. You know? (laughs) You know, JBL will be like, you know, there was a lot of under the radar wrestlers in that war to me, you know, much like yourself, greatly under the radar in the you know current wrestling space, hell of a worker. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like smash cut to Freddie Prince talking about <laughs> Killer Cross or whatever. I don't know. I mean, it sounds fun. All right, let's close with this. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. What's happening now? Is there something else in the next two you need to talk about? Yeah, there is. Yeah, what else we got? 
<laughs> Santos Escobar versus Tony D'Angelo once and for all. What, is that what the branding is, or is that your addition to the branding? Is it called once and for all? <laughs> I think that's, I believe that's the, uh, the, that's the branding. Line. So basically, the story in this one is if Tony D'Angelo wins, Escobar, if D'Angelo wins, Escobar has to leave NXT. All right, oh, good. Well, good. Yeah, I think so, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but the weird thing is, apparently, if if Escobar loses and has to leave NXT, Tony gets to keep. Legado. Oh. So it's like... That would be silly because uh, they need them up I'm there not, as a team. I'm not mm -hmm. mad at that. Yeah. So, so, here's the thing. Like, I get why Legado is popular, but Santos, fine on his own. Yeah, uh, I agree. Much yeah. in the same way I was so... I remember, so I, like, I got why the hit row thing was popular. Shane Strickland did not need to be anywhere near that. Mm-hmm. Like, like yeah. he, he doesn't. Like, he didn't. Like, good for him, and it was a nice act and everything. Shane didn't need it. Santos, I think you bring him up, fine on his own. Especially that with Hunter running things. He's going to be fine. I'd bring Agreed. him up with... um. I'd probably bring him up with Electra, honestly. Ooh. I would, too. Yeah, yeah, to the act. Yeah. yeah. He looks so cool, like, in his suit with Electra next yeah. to him. You know, it's you just... That's good. Yeah. He'd be a hell of a mid-card champ, wouldn't he? Yeah. Wouldn't he be a great yeah. addition mm -hmm. to yeah. that kind of... Rejuvenated scene. No, that's a good time. I'm intrigued by that. All right, this cloak. Mon is that everything on NXT? I don't want to, you know. Uh, Roxanne, Roxanne versus Cora Jade. Pete Feud, brother. Um. <laughs> My favorite thing you did there a minute ago <clears throat> was when you were talking about Tony D'Angelo. You just, without anyone asking, went, the story behind this one is like you were on, like, fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like you were doing a documentary. You got to know, you know, me, so. you gotta, you gotta know these things. You know me. I've got, to, I've got to spread the good word of the D'Angelo family. And um, you get paid for that. Um, again, we've got some interesting conversation about the Santos business. All right, let's close with this. Your current optimism, excitement for the World Wrestling Federation. Jack, I'll start with you. I know this has been a hell of a turnaround for you in the last month. You're back 10 in. Out of 10. Fight up. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I'm loving it. I'm, ha I'm having so much fun. And yeah, maybe. It is because I took that long break, like over two years, then all this happened. I can't, so like maybe that'll dwindle a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, but right now I'm just I'm having fun. It's, it's fun for me again. Good for you, mate. I'm happy for us. Look at us. We're yeah. having fun. Yeah. Look at us. Bobby Two Shoes. Where's your excitement at for this one, mate? Yeah, probably, uh, probably about an eight. You know, I think SmackDown still needs a little bit of work, but that'll come in time. Uh, Raw's been very good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's there's no real complaints. I mean, SmackDown, you know, they, they didn't have uh, all the pieces there to start with. and uh, But, you know, my thing is, like, if you see someone being excited that, you know, Raw's good again or whatever, just leave them alone. Everyone's attacking everyone <laughs> for, you know, just being excited, being optimistic. Please, somebody clip that. And, Bob, I'm not busting your balls, but that was a great <laughs> fucking quote. I want that video. Somebody clip that goddamn video because I'm going to use it 10 billion <laughs> times. I'm going to send it to confirm shoot once a day. Yeah. <laughs> Leave him alone, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> All right, Monty, I'm not asking how excited you are because you just fucking put over an NXT show. That speaks for itself. I have one wow. actual last question. I've been hiding this. Ready? Brandy Rhodes. <laughs> She's coming back. Jack Crosby is happening. Brother, you fired up. I am so fired up. People think it's a bit. It's not a bit. Get Brandy out there. Open mic night, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like Brandy. I like Brandy. I'm sorry. That's fine. It's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Monty, how do you feel about me immediately texting Jack that she could, she should join control? <laughs> because that was my immediate pitch. <laughs> She's fucking, listen, we, we'll we'll get some good content out of it in the group would, chats yeah. on the timeline. So, pop, I guess. Um, Mandy Rose, she's coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, Mandy Rose. It's kind of, I guess, it's expected. You know, when she was, she's always been training. So, so what for? She isn't gonna be in AEW. You know. <laughs> 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 I don't know, man. The knockout's title, maybe. I don't know. It was, it was a surprise me. Bob, did you have the inside scoop on this? No, this was a surprise. Uh, good news, though. You know, wrestling is more than one royal family. So, heard that. you know, yeah. keep that going. Chat, is there anyone we can raid on Twitch? Or are we going to just end this and not use this viewership we have right now? We raided Drew Gulak last night, and he said late night. He seems to think that was our, like, name. Can he we do a thing? Like, Mr. Grin. <laughs> 
Can we, <laughs> can we uh can we do a bit while triple while we can do this right now with triple h being so aggressive with um talent acquisition like at the end of each fed dead show we'll guess triple h is next signing all right let's go on who's your guess i assume you got a name you don't have a name you just you just pitch a segment <laughs> with, with, um the fiend the next person to show up on raw or SmackDown. Oh my God, Sasha and Naomi, maybe. Wait, I mean, what? what we, why don't we exclude them? I like the exercise. Why don't we exclude list. Sasha and Naomi? Though? All right. <laughs> right, Jack, <laughs> who's your guess? This is obvious. <laughs> who's your guess, Jack? Braun. <laughs> Braun, Bob, who you got? Uh, I'll go with the Fiend. Monty, your pick was banned. So who are you picking? <laughs> Uh, I think Monty just wanted to talk about Sasha and Naomi like the rest of the planet. <laughs> that was the way of bringing them up. Talk about <laughs> talk about the new hair. <laughs> God bless. Slag. Um, that was pretty cool. Actually, they was on that premiere. In all seriousness, that was pretty cool. It was pretty fucking yeah. cool. It always is when stuff like that we've uh, you know pro wrestlers. Uh, I'm still really convinced on Gargano. Um, it's just when. Fiend is interesting. No, absolutely. Oh, not, interesting. I don't think. I don't. I don't think <laughs> that is. It's definitely interesting. Maybe for content reasons yet again. But um, yeah, hmm. sure Jonah. Bro, he could he, just show up, bro. Bro, if he flies back from the G one and immediately shows up on fucking SmackDown, I will pop. Wait, who? So I think that. I, I think that is probably what's going to happen. Oh, Jonah. Yeah, because like the. So here's the thing with Jonah. He beat Okada, so it's like there's a run waiting for him if he wants one. But if the Fed comes calling, I don't know, maybe you just do it. I, I, I saw somebody bring his name up the other day, and I completely forgot about him. And I said, "Oh, yeah. that'd make a lot of sense because Triple H loved him. He yeah. still does." Yeah, I think it's happening from what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that would be interesting. But yeah, we because he didn't get pinned in the G1, so him just immediately showing up on WWE TV would be nuts. But we will see. All right, we're gonna raid. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, that's a great way to promote it, isn't it? Aiden English. What's Aiden English's name? I'm sorry. I forget these people. Yeah, <laughs> forget these people. Really? No other options. Well, they want me to raid Adam Cole. Well, we, we've, got, we've, got no, we've got no Chris here, or? No, nah, he, he doesn't ever, like, he doesn't reply to my DMs, so I'll stop doing that. Me. Um, no, that's fine. Also, shout out to Bam for cheering bits. We love you, bro. Right, we're going to raid Drama King Matt. Pop. All right, there you go. Bob, you a big fan of his work? I am actually, yes. Can you give me your top 50 Aiden English moments, please. Uh, he was in that few with Rusev. That was good. Right. And, uh, right. Stan, Bob, you're out of time. Out okay. Of time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Rusevperius.com for Monty. At Bobby Two Guns for Bob. Um, Jack, you don't like to promote the CBS gimmick here because it, it exposes that you're a professional. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get those people. People used to think I worked in wrestling media. I was like, no, no, no. My life's much worse. I work in college football. <laughs> well there you go folks we hope you enjoyed this we'll see you on the next one in the meantime enjoy this outro or how